every night here on Fox 9 on your side. We like to take a closer look at the weather. Yeah, and uh, try to learn a few things mm -hmm. while we're at it. And uh, boy, that big storm that hit over near Washington, D.C. Mm -hmm. recently is something I've never heard of. It's called what? A, a derecho. A derecho. That's right. Learned about that at meteorology school. Wow. It uh, A lot of times will happen at night. That was the case of this one. And typically the Midwest is getting these, but this one was extremely long-lived. We heard a lot about D.C., a lot of people in D.C., right? But look at this map. This is going to show you kind of a time sequence of where the storm system was and what it looked like on Doppler radar. This is a series of radar images put together. This is Lake Michigan. This is Chicago right here. This is where the system started, way up to the northwest. You see it right here. This real, real hot air to the south. There's what we call a warm front right in this region here. It's the classic scenario for these to start, and once they start, they have a life of their own. A cluster of storms form. You get the convection, which causes the storm system, to, the, all the air to rise. You get the storm system to develop and grow. Downbursts go down out ahead of it, and then start to shoot energy in front, which causes more lifting, and the thunderstorms just recreate themselves. So here is an image at 2 p.m. Uh, Eastern time. This is 3 p.m., and these numbers here are wind gusts. Here's a 91 mile an hour wind gust at Fort Wayne, Indiana. That was the strongest with this storm system. And and you'll see the line here. It typically forms a bow, what we call a bow echo. When you see this curve right here, typically this is where your strongest winds are. And hence, you can see the 91, the 84 right here. And it just got bigger and bigger and bigger as it pushed to the southeast. This is Ohio right here. And this is the leading edge of Virginia. So you can see where it was 7 p.m., then 8 p.m., and then overnight pushed all the way into Virginia and D.C. The top edge, again, the strongest winds. And this is Washington, D.C., right in here. And so right back over this way here. So that's that's why you had some of those strong winds come through, taking down all kinds of trees. This is the official report from NOAA, all of the severe weather reports. You see where all the blue is? You see that just fan out like this? We had the severe weather reports from Jersey all the way into central North Carolina. These are strong wind reports. Everything in blue are high wind reports, and you can see that all right in here, there was only hail back to the south and west. So typically what's happening is you have all of this heat right here, and there's the flow around it. That was the, the flow in the mid-levels of the atmosphere, and that's the direction that pushed the storm system from this direction here. Now you have all this power out and this heat wave is pushing towards the east and so now you've got people without power for a day and a half, two days and they've got temperatures that are going to be topping 95 to 100 degrees. Just amazing that this occurred. So a duratio, the climatology is four duratios every three years here. This yellow area, one duratio about every four years in this region and you get inside here maybe one every year. So typically once a year, that's it in this region. A little bit more rare for what happened in D.C. But again, wind gusts between 55 and 91 miles an hour. Guys, Oof. that wow. is a strong, strong storm. They call it an inland hurricane. Yeah, well, like, and that sums it up. Yeah, like ripples going out. Yeah, it, it, well, those are all images together, but it's just a yeah. huge wave coming right at you. Gary, Indiana, the starting point. Yeah, <laughs> got it. All right.